Hello and welcome back to the channel and if you saw the last video you'll know that we were talking about the trip to France with the Volvo XC60 and the slight problem that started to appear just on the way back and then on the journey back from Kent up to the northeast where we're based we did have a little bit of a problem and it's definitely getting worse so we're going to take a look at the XC60 see what's going on we do have a fault code logged as well um, so we can take a look and figure out what's going on with it that's right so uh, in the last video you'll have seen we were talking about driving the XC60 all the way down to France and back again and obviously we're also based in the northeast of England so it's quite a distance just to travel from the northeast down to there uh, about six seven hours drive and then of course the three and a half hour drive across to France in our Volvo XC60 so this is the two litre D4 engine um, and if you remember, I did mention that uh, we had a couple of not major problems, but certainly an indication of something was, was not right on the way back. And that came back when I was driving back from Kent up to the northeast. And then recently just driving it up and down the motorway, I did notice the same fault, the lack of power. So what was going on? Well, as you were driving along uh, about 60, 70 miles an hour, if you went to accelerate or overtake or just needed a little bit more power because you were starting to go uphill, what I found is the car started to lose power. It would push power on and then you would feel it back off and then on again and then off and then about on that sort of timing. And if you held the, the accelerator in the same place, it would keep doing that cycle. Now, if you accelerated a bit harder, it seemed to get out of it or drop back, it came out of it again. And I haven't noticed it at slower speeds or anything like that yet, but I think this is the start of a problem and I want to try and get on top of it now and figure out what's going on because we want to solve that. This is our, our daily driver. We want to keep it running. We want to keep it happy. So having said all of that, what I was trying to work out is what to look at first. Could it be a turbo boost leak? Could it be turbo actuator sticking, uh, EGR? Could be all sorts of things that could cause this. Now I did also wonder if it was the automatic gearbox swapping between gears. And the way I solved that is by switching the gearbox into manual because on the, on the XC60 you see, You've got your standard automatic drive, but I can also shift it across into manual shift mode and I can hold it in a gear. Now that's useful because I, might, I did that, tested it out and found that it was still the same problem. So it definitely wasn't the automatic gearbox shifting between gears, which eliminates that side of things. It, it doesn't eliminate the uh, power transfer between the engine and the gearbox, but I think that's getting less likely. And then the other day when I was driving it, it started to do it. And what I did, rather than accelerating to get out of that problem or anything like that, I kept it in that issue. I made the issue continue and continue. And then I had the engine light come on, which is what I was after. I wanted a code to be logged because then we've got somewhere to work from. And on the XC60, the engine light is the orange uh, indicator at the bottom see there we go there's the orange info now if that goes red then that's a major problem and you stop and you check that out whereas it came up orange and the message was engine system service required which is generic for there's a fault being logged there's a fault code being logged into the ECU and it needs looking into um, so that was good because that's what I wanted to happen. I wanted a fault code there to try and narrow things down a little bit. 
uh, and I'm going to show you the fault codes that were logged because there's a few historic codes there and there's also the new one which I think is the one we need to look into today. So the code that was logged, uh, it's one of the Volvo specific codes so luckily my, um, my iCarSoft reader read the code properly and it's a P046C85 and I'll show that on the screen you'll see the code that's been read from the iCarSoft and that is the EGR sensor A circuit outside of range. Now that's, that's okay news because it could be the EGR, it could be the sensors, it could be that it's gummed up and that would kind of make sense. We were driving a lot of miles, we were putting a lot through and we were also driving it at a higher speed as normal because in France uh, it was a dry day so that means the speed limit was 130 kilometers per hour which works out around about 80 miles an hour so it's faster than I would normally sustain and with their amazing toll roads which I talk about this on the previous video, you manage to maintain that speed constantly. There's loads of lanes, it's generally not jam-packed, and I managed to do it in a decent time. So that there is the first sensor that I want to take a look at. That is our T-MAP sensor. Okay. That is pretty clogged with soot. That is not going to be reading very good sensor values. So I think first thing is we get that cleaned up. cleaning the sensor you can also see it's quite suited up fortunately this is one of the problems with the way that an EGR works in that it's pushing exhaust gases back in there and it does cause all of these sort of carbon deposits which isn't good for sensors things like that now I've cleaned that sensor up you can see that looks much better now so we can put that one back in. I think that's a good start. The other one I'm going to do, although it didn't come up with a code, is the MAF sensor, mass airflow sensor. I'm just going to take that out, give that a bit of a clean as well, because that's quite commonly an issue as well. So I think that one's worth doing. It's just here, it's easy to get to, so we might as well do that. Try not to throw it around. Actually, that doesn't look bad at all, the mass airflow sensor. It does look a little bit discoloured, but I don't think that's anything to worry about. Probably worth a quick blast of air just to clean up. Now, I'm not sure what to do next, because uh, we've cleaned the sensor. Now, the throttle body and the EGR are down here. Um, get to it not too bad, take the air box off um, probably easier to take the um, the mass airflow sensor off as well so we've got a bit of space there that's the edge of the throttle body itself and then the EGR is attached to it and you can generally clean it in place the uh, throttle body comes out with three bolts I think what I might do is I might just try it as is after the cleaning that one sensor and let's see if we get any more fault codes logged uh, if we do, then we need to take a look at EGR and the throttle body.
So I'm going to take it for a drive and see what we get. Well, I've come back from a drive and it seemed to do it again. So that suggests that uh, sensor clean hasn't quite done the trick. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug it in and see if we've got any codes that have logged. And um, let's just put the ignition on. Uh, we do have an ECM fault showing up. So difficult to show you the screen on this without the reflections. Right, so we're still getting the turbocharger overspeed. Turbocharger boost sensor. Turbocharger under boost. So it's moving away from EGR. It's looking like turbocharger sensors. So the, uh, the turbo. And that's something that I'm going to have to look into because that's not something that I've checked out. I was hoping it wasn't going to be turbo related because the turbo on this engine is right at the back. And I think it is quite an awkward spot. But uh, yeah, it looks like that's, that's our problem though. So doing a little bit of reading, uh, there's two sensors. There's the um, manifold pressure sensor which is down a little bit like where I was explaining before about where the uh, throttle body lives, down that side of things. That's another sensor, and there's a good chance that's the sensor that's throwing the code up. So I think it's worth getting down to that part, taking a look, possibly replacing that sensor. So I'm going to, uh, going to take that apart. Let's get the throttle body off and take a look at that sensor location. With the airbox removed, we can take off the main inlet hose and then that's the throttle body there. Hopefully we can see the sensor just behind it in a moment and take a look at that. So let me get this pipe off. I'm not sure if I might just move it out of the way rather than disconnect at the bottom like that. And then we can see inside the throttle body. It's a little bit dirty, but not horrendous. I can't see the sensor that I'm after though. That's not looking very obvious at the moment. What I might do is I know that the throttle body does come out with uh, four bolts. You can see fairly straightforward. And then the connector might take that out and give it a bit of a clean as well. Eight mil socket on these. Might need an extension to get in there. Not super tight though. When you take it off, there is this little gasket. It should be good to go again. You see it's got a little tab on the top that helps hook it on and hold it when you put it back on. But you just don't want to lose that. Let's just lift this off. Now there is a little hook on the bottom of there. You can see for the control cable. Let's just pop that out. And I can remove the throttle body. Now that's removed, we can also take a look at the EGR itself, which is just here. Now, it's not terrible, but it's not great. Now I can just clean it where it is. And I think that's what I might do. Not spraying into the engine, but just spraying a cleaner on a cloth and then clean it out just to help. Again, the EGR, uh, sorry, not the EGR, the throttle body doesn't look too bad actually. I've done a clean up of the throttle body. You can see that's much cleaner. It didn't take too much doing to be honest. Like I said it wasn't too bad. But the pressure sensor that I'm looking for now there's the cooler down there and let's just take that off. That's easier. It's somewhere down there. I think it's on that cable that I can just see disappearing off to the front. I'm hoping I don't need to take the uh, intercooler off. Let's get a torch down there, see if I can spot the sensor hiding down on the end of that wire. Sure enough, it is down there. Let's see if I can get the camera to focus on it. You can see it's just kind of hiding. I don't know if you can see because of the intercooler being in the way, but there is a sensor there, and that's the one I'm after. Now I can see the torques on it and we can see the connect cable connector now whether I can get my hand down there and reach it I'm not sure also the torques look a little rusted 
I think a long extension on a Torx. And let's see if I can get that undone. See if I can reach down and get it out. Now this has just worked. You can see long extension to try and get down there with a flexi on the end so that I can do that's so I can get the Torx in place and then turn it and yep that's coming undone and done now I think I'm gonna have to get the magnet in there to grab that bolt so I don't lose it and then whether I can get my hand in or not to try and grab that sensor that's the bolt out now whether I can go and grab that sensor out is another question there's absolutely no chance that the camera is going to be able to see what I'm doing here and to be honest I'm not I'm just putting my hand in hoping yeah I can grab the sensor there we go I've lifted it out and here it is okay I've got the sensor off and the connector off which is fairly tricky and here it is. Now, looks very similar to the T-Map sensor, so what is this? I'll put the code in the description. Now I don't know if that little white dot is supposed to be there or not. That looks like a bit of debris jammed in there. I'm going to use some very fine pliers and see if it is. Well, I think that little white part is actually part of the sensor. I have given it another bit of a clean. It wasn't too dirty or anything like that, but this could be a faulty sensor. Um, I might need to look at replacing this. It's not too bad to get to. Um, I now know that I don't need to take the throttle body off to get at it. So I think after cleaning it, I'm going to put this back on again and um, just see see what happens and if needed I think replacing this sensor would be the next logical step because after that it would then be looking at the turbo itself and on this engine if you follow it through so the, the air box obviously takes the air in goes across the top of the engine here down and our turbo is sat at the back there now it could be a sticky actuator on the turbo that's quite a common one as well but we've cleaned this sensor up, we'll put the sensor back in again, tricky to get at but not impossible, uh, put it all back together and we'll give it another try I think. That is such a tricky location, I've got the, I've got the little uh, Torx bolt back in again, using a magnet really helped, now I'm just going to get the, uh, the flexi torque in and get that fastened back up again. So there we go, what I've done is I've cleaned those few bits out, checked that sensor, cleaned it. Going to give it another run now and see how we get on with it. Just, it is quite windy actually, so I'm not sure if you can hear me properly. Um, but yeah, so that's what I'm going to do, going to give it a go, see how we get on with that. If not, might need to replace one of those sensors because I think they are about 20, 30 quid, so not too bad cost wise otherwise it's going to be possibly a sticky actuator or a problem with the turbo itself which might be a bit of a problem and it's probably something beyond what we're going to be able to do here but fingers crossed give it a go and we'll see how that is and what i'm going to do is i'll update you in the next video how i get on let you know what's going on with the volvo xc60 uh, otherwise, I hope you like this video. Please pop a like and subscribe to the channel for more things like this. And I'll see you in the next video.